Now to get started, let's answer the question why should we bother with dynamic typing? Now first of all, notice that both the common language runtime and the C-sharp programming language are static at heart. And that's something that dates all the way back to the very beginnings of the development and design of both technologies in the late 90s. Now there's a lot of benefits to using static typing. First of all, the developer experience is second to none thanks to static compile time checking, error reporting and things like IntelliSense are also fueled by static type information being available at development time. From a runtime's point of view, performance can greatly benefit from knowing the exact layout of objects based on their types. Now what that means in terms of the common language runtime is that every memory location in managed code, whether it's on the heap or on the stack, is something that has a type associated with it. At any point in time during the execution of verifiable and safe managed code, the runtime knows exactly what the types of your objects are. However, dynamic typing has its use as well. For example, there's lots of data in the world, especially in cloud-connected applications, that are weakly typed in nature. XML files without a schema, JSON, which is just JavaScript object notation that doesn't have any type information associated with it, and still we may want to have easy-to-use patterns to access properties and attributes and, and child elements in those kind of technologies. Secondly, dynamic languages have seen a huge popularity boost in the, in, in the last couple of years. It started all with things like Python and Ruby becoming popular and ported to the .NET framework, and more recently JavaScript is seeing a, a complete renaissance as well. Now, dynamic languages are popular not only because of accessing dynamic data and dynamic languages um, being much more popular. One of the reasons for that is the perceived developer productivity that you get from a dynamic language. Namely, that you don't have to compile your code before you can see it running. You can simply write the code and, and hit F5 without any expensive compile steps. In terms of data, you don't have to spend time writing XSD schemas for XML documents, for example. And finally, because of this short iteration cycle of writing code, executing it, and seeing it come alive, there are less barriers to experimentation. You can even extend objects that you don't control at all by adding properties at runtime. So let's take a look at C Sharp's interpretation of dynamic typing. Well, what's really going on here is that C Sharp hasn't lost its heart and soul of static typing. In fact, it represents things that need dynamic dispatch and dynamic behavior using a static type that represents dynamic dispatch. Now this special type with the dynamic keyword simply compiles away to system.object. So it's a very weakly typed system underneath. And wherever you use dynamic objects, the compiler emits so-called dynamic call sites that contain all the information for the runtime to figure out what to do at runtime. So let's take a look at an example of the same code fragment in three different typing disciplines. The first one here is a code fragment where I have a string called s and I sign it foo and I can call s.2 upper, I even get IntelliSense because s is strongly typed and it's statically typed. The compiler statically knows what the type of s is. However, I can still do static typing of s but statically type it to be system.object. Now system.object is weakly typed. Why is that? Because system.object is the least amount of type information you can imagine. It's the mother of all types. As a result, we don't get IntelliSense that shows two upper. We will see equals get hash code and two string, but we won't see two upper. And the compiler complains because it can statically verify that the system.object not necessarily has a two upper method for all possible uh, values of s. If s would be assigned an int, then it would not be valid to call to upper. However, starting with C Sharp 4.0, if I type s to be dynamic, then I can write the code that you see above. I can write s.2 upper. I won't see any IntelliSense, but the compiler will trust me that at runtime we will find the to upper method available on whatever runtime type s has. In this case, at runtime, 
uh, the CLR and the DLR will figure out that S is of type string and the two upper call will indeed succeed. Now this is still weakly typed and it's also dynamically typed because the compiler doesn't do any static checking. So let's switch back to the desktop and take a look at C-sharp's dynamic type in action before we dive behind the scenes of the language feature. 